welcome to more exciting coverage of the 2014 Audi R8 LMS Cup. The series is here in Japan for the very first time at the iconic Fuji International Speedway at the base of Mount Fuji. Coming up in the show, we will get inside track on the Audi R8 LMS race car and we will get a closer look at the track through the eyes of those who know it best. And plus, we will go behind the scenes and find out how important the support team is behind each one of these drivers. First though, let's get up to date with the series so far and check out how the drivers perform in qualifying. Coming to Japan, Andre Kuto was keen to bounce back after a wretched start to the season. In the first race of the year in Korea, he was clipped at the first turn by Marchi Lee, and that would end Kuto's race. Starting at the back of the grid for the second race of the year, Kuto drove a solid race but could only climb as high as sixth. But having raced here in Japan countless times in his career, he knows this Fuji track better than anyone, and the former Macau F3 Grand Prix winner made his experience count with a qualifying time that was seven tenths of a second quicker than the field. Going back to Korea, Marchi Lee was the one who had clipped Kuto at the start of that first race, and while he wasn't penalized for that, he was for this move as he attempted to come right back at fellow Hong Kong driver Matt Solomon. That drops the 2012 champion down to ninth. But he bounced back with a podium finish in round two, and he's continued that form into Japan, going second fastest in qualifying. Third in qualifying here was current series leader Alex Young, who will be looking to consolidate his position at the top of the standings. He finished third in round one in Korea, but started on pole for round two and successfully fought off Marchi Lee to win the race. But that win in round two means Young will start round three here in Japan with an extra 60 kilos in his car, while Rahul Fry will have 40 and Marchi Lee will have 20. Fry was in a three-way battle in qualifying with Sun Jung and Korean KOU. In the end, Sun was fourth fastest, followed by Yu, then Fry, with the Chinese driver outperforming his compatriot Frankie Chung, who finished a disappointing eighth in qualifying after winning the opening race of the season. Audi cars certainly look the part when they are racing on the track at top speed, but how different are they from the Audi R8 street models? Joining me now is the race support engineer Johannes Kraus. Johannes, talk about the engine, how it's different from the street model. The engine we are using in our R8 LMS Cup car is pretty much the same as is used in a road car. There's uh, some modifications done to the air intake system, but beside that, mechanic-wise, it's exactly the same. The gearbox is very important for a race car, so where is it and how is it different from the street model? Uh, the gearbox is located right behind the engine. This is one of the parts of the, of the race car which is completely different to the road car. This gearbox is a special designed dog type race gearbox to achieve the best performance in shifting times and in low transfer. The steering wheel can be taken out to give a better access to the driver. So the right hand side is the pedal for the upshift and the left hand side is the pedal for the downshift. Aerodynamics is very important to this car, so what is the feature of that? So in this car we have mainly two big aerodynamic devices. One is the big splitter and the additionally two dive planes which are producing a downforce, which are pressing the car to the ground, giving a better braking performance and of course a better cornering performance. The rear wing is adjustable in different angles for different kind of racetracks. So the lower the angle, the more top speed you got, but the less downforce. And the higher the angle is, the more downforce and less top speed you achieve. And finally, let's talk about the brakes. How is different from the street model? Obviously, this car is running on a pretty high speed and of course we want to achieve the best braking on the last second. Therefore, the car is equipped with a special racing brakes. It's air-cooled in the inside of the two different discs. We have the special brake calipers and of course we have a special brake pads with a high friction coefficient to achieve the best possible braking. Johannes, thank you so much. This track is four and a half kilometers in length with one of the longest home streets in racing. And it's great one circuit that's in perfect condition. But as with any circuit, there are certain turns to focus on. And with the new push to pass feature, it's going to be more important than normal. 
This year we implemented the uh, new push to pass function. Uh, that means the driver will be able to push a button and he has 50 horsepower more for 10 seconds. So uh, during the uh, qualifying lap, most likely they would use it here twice. They would come around the corner, use it after turn two, go around very, very quickly, use it after turn eight and turn nine. And when they try to finish the lap as fast as possible, they would use it twice again and to finish the lap and hopefully have a good qualifying lap. My favorite part will be turn one because we have uh, so many opportunity to pass each other. In the other way, it will be very difficult to defense uh, another driver to pass you. My favorite part of the track is turn three uh, because it's a very fast corner. It's the fastest corner in the track. Uh, it's really nice with a little bit of banking and a very long uh, corner. So uh, when you have a high downforce car, it's really amazing to drive this corner because you can feel really all the G-force is pulling your body. This corner is never the same, so you have to change the line and you have to change the approach to the corner. My favorite part of the track is actually the last corner. Because the last corner, after the last corner is 1.4 kilometers straight. Everyone has to focus in on the last corner exit. So if you go in too quick, then you may have a risk of having a bad exit. The corner is just a simple right corner, but the um, consequence after that is very important. You know, Fuji is one of the very um, famous is the straight line because it's very long. And I think the turn one will be um, so many opportunities to overtake. I think uh, the push to pass system will be the key point in the straight. The long straight is approximately 1.5 kilometer. And uh, just to put this in perspective, how long the straight is, actually an Airbus A380 would be able to land here. So on the straight, coming off the last corner, we all have to use it. I will start uh, uh, P1 tomorrow, so I guess defensively at first and hopefully always defensively because if it's offensively that means I, I went back, right? There are a lot of possibilities to use the push to pass function, so I think it will be a very interesting race. Looks like there could be serious battles out there today. Now let's go and check out all the action from the first race of this weekend. So here we are at the foot of Mount Fuji at the Fuji International Speedway. The legendary track is 16 turns, 4.5 kilometers long, and we've got the great Andre Kuto being in P1 from March Lee, Alex Jung, Sun Jung, KOU, Rahul Fry, and Aidan Wright with Frankie Chen filling the top eight places on the grid. The second half looks like with Ronald Wu, P11, were from Jeffrey Lee, Steve Lin, Matt Solomon, Daniel Bilski, and rounding up the field is Renway Ricky with the Japanese hopeful Kaichi Iwaki. And it's race time here in Fuji International Speedway, and Andre Kuto has got the jump over Marchi Lee, and Alex Jung is trying to duck down the inside. Here he goes into turn one. Is he going to take a jump onto the field? Kuto goes first into turn one from Alex Jung, Sun Jun, Marchi Lee. So Kuto is keeping the lead as they come now into Dunlop, and still Sun Jun's having a battle here with Alex Jung. Marchi Lee's in the back there with KOU. Nicely through, Alex Jung protects his position. And Sun Jun's gone wide there at turn one as they come down into Coca-Cola. And it's still Sun Jun pressure there from March Lee and Alex Jung. Alex Jung's still battling March Lee. March Lee goes wide around trying to overtake him here at Dunlop. So coming down this home straight and it's now Sun Jun having a battle with Alex Jung. A little bit of a clip there by Alex Jung. And Alex has got some problems, his gearbox looks like it's seized up, he's gone into neutral and everyone now has gone past him. He's dropping like a stone through the field here. This is real racing, this is going to bubble up into a really good strong race. We could be seeing one of the best races of the Audi R8 LMS Cup season here as it's all changed going through turn one. Now coming down through Dunlop. Sun Jun still fighting off KOU for their position here. Rahul Fry is getting closer with Matt Solomon. And KOU ducks down the inside here at turn one. Takes it, but he's overcooked. He's breaking. And Sun Jun now takes the position back. Sun Jun saw what KOU did. Rahul Fry now is on the back of KOU. Now, can Rahul Fry get through Coca Cola? She does, but KU comes straight back. This is real racing here at the Fuji International Speedway. Coming down the home straight, and it's still 
Andro Kuto from Marchili. These two have been dominant throughout the race. Ralph Fry still pestering Sunjun. Now coming around 100R. Sunjun's got the inside line. Ralph Fry's on the outside. This is real wheel to wheel, toe to toe racing. Sunjun just forces Ralph Fry off her line there and continues. Now coming through turn one, KOU and Aiden Wright. It looks like there. Aiden Wright just got a bump there from KOU. This is real roughhouse stuff here at Fuji. This is a real dogfight. We got from P3 all the way down to P9. This is push to pass heaven for all the drivers. They're trying to use it, trying to get past the guy in front. They're trying to defend people from behind. Here they come down the home straight. Too wide with Sunjun from Rahul Fry. Sunjun's just pushing Rahul Fry over a little bit. It looks like she's going down pit lane. Is he going to give her enough space? Just enough here to actually get down this home straight. She has to clip out of the red zone. Now KOU sees all the danger. Goes on the one outside and KOU jumps two places as they come down to the end of the home turn. Can he work out his braking position? Sunjun's gone on the inside, Adley Fong's on the outside. This is real racing here at Fuji, and KOU's gone wide and he's let everyone through. He's opened the barn door. Sunjun, Rao Fry, and Adley Fong now have gone through. So's Aiden Wright. Matt Solomon has now come up close to KOU with three wide going into Coca Cola. Sunjun's still there. He takes a position. Adley Fong now tries to overtake. The push to pass is being shown to good effect here. Round 100R. Oh, and Alex Young just got, looks like, got clipped by another car, and that forced him into having a collision there with Aiden Wright. The safety car is now out. So how is Andre Kuto going to restart this race? He's got the field backed up, the uh, back marker. Looks like he's causing a problem for the rest of the field. Kuto's got the go. He's got the foot down to the floor now. And he is all systems go down this long straight. March and he's trying to catch up. The back markers now hindered. Adley Fung and the rest of the field. Kuso has got a major advantage now. And across the line, Kuso wins round three of the Audi I LMS Cup from March Lee and Adley Fung. <laughs> Andre, congratulations. What was more important for you, the start or the restart? Well, uh, both, right? Uh, but um, I'm very happy to win in Fuji. This is one of my favorite tracks. I've been racing in Japan for a long time. And uh, to come here with Audi Cup is awesome for me. I really like, uh, so yeah, I'm very happy. Marty, and are you happy with the second given the weight in your car? Yeah, it's, it's happy, it's good result, and uh, it's 20 kilos. Sounds not that much, but it's Yvette on the braking. But uh, anyway, I mean, it's a good result. Andre definitely do a better job today. Uh, I try to maintain the gap with him and uh, try to use the push to pass system in the middle, but uh, not success. And um, look forward to the second race and uh, hope uh, just a bit and we'll, we'll, we'll have a good show next one. Adelie, what a fantastic race for you. And which was one of your favorite moves of overtaking in this race? Uh, I think the move on the outside of Sun Jeng into turn three. Um, that was a move I didn't know if it would work or not. Uh, it was a big risk, but luckily the car gripped at the exit of the corner, and that was my favorite move of the whole race. There was a lot it happening in the race, so it's hard to recall everything that happened, but uh, I'm glad I'm f I finished where I was compared to the, sh the really bad qualifying I had. So this is how round three finished. Andre Kuzo gets a 25 points from March Lee. Adley Fong, the top six, were finished off by Rahul Fry, Sunjun, and K.O. In the latter half of the field, Steve Lim got P11 from Ashraf Devar, Frankie Chen, Aidan Wright did not finish, as well as Matt Solomon, Alex Young, and Ren. Motor racing always focuses on drivers, but behind each one is a team of support staff that are crucial to their success. And none is more important than the chief mechanic. Now let's find out more about this special relationship from Swiss driver Raha Fry. I told you, 70%, I just did the last 30.
Motor racing is perhaps the ultimate team sport, with a whole group of workers behind each driver on the grid. But while the engineers in the cup could work on more than one car, only the mechanics are assigned to a single driver. It is my mechanic, he really takes care um, of the car. One part is that he's my mechanic and the other part is a little bit, uh, let's say, my supporter. I always uh, ask her, are you, are you nervous? And then she will back the question to me, are you nervous too? No, I'm excited, I'm not a nervous. He's thinking the way I do, so this this is the great thing. He's listening and he's thinking already, finding always a solution. That's Eddie. My highlight was when I won in Shanghai last year. Before she go out, I go praying for her. The race come, she won for, a, for the first time in Asia. Ralph Fry takes the checker flag and wins Shanghai from Alex Young. was standing um, down there, was looking up on the podium, had his uh, phone in, in, the, in his hand. I was very happy. His emotion that he's really living for, for, for that win, living for me, for his car, this is pretty nice to see and I hope we're going to achieve this again, that I can be, that I can stand up on the podium, seeing him down there and uh, cheering for me. Rahal just missed out on the podium in round three, despite starting from sixth position and carrying extra weight in her car. Now let's go check out all the action from round four. So here we are, round four, and Andre Couto is in P1 for March Lee. Alex Young has had these mechanics working furiously on the grid to get him back into the game. Stefan Montesi is P11 from Ronald Wu and David Cheng in P13. Steve Lin is P14, Alex Al 15. And rounding up the rest of the field is Jackie Young and Vignessa Morthy. And it's race time for the Fuji International Speedway round four on Andre Couto. He's got 60 kgs. Can he fend off Marchley? Alex Young now is coming right the way through the middle. He's making a major move there. Gets past Marchley coming into turn one. But Andre Couto manages to keep lead from Marchley. Lee is in third, but there goes Alex Young. He's trying to make a move around 100 R. He's got less than 60 kgs than Andre Couto. And Alex Young takes the lead. And that is a major effort after his mechanics have worked so hard to get that car back onto the track. Couto with Marchley. Kuto's got 20 kgs more. Aidan Wright's got a problem. He's now in the pits. They're working furiously to get him back. There goes Kuto. He's got 20 kgs more than Marchley. Marchley is gradually getting past, but Kuto defends his line. Coming down to turn two. And we have Matt Solomon now with a well dogfight with Adley Fong. Fong's got the inside line. Matt Solomon, though, has got now the line right the way through. Dunlop going after the second exit. Frankie Chen now uses his push to pass to get through. Matt Solomon on Coca-Cola. Now Rahul Fry drives one more down this long 1.5 kilometre straight. Can Rahul Fry get it now? against Andre Couto, she lets him know that he, she is there, but Couto is holding firm, just make sure that he's got that last breaking point, Ralph Fry still under the bumper, trying to find a weakness with Couto, Couto still got that line coming through Coca-Cola, and he's got his position, again coming now into turn one, Marchley hasn't seen Couto, and there's a collision, Marchley is off, Couto looks like he's damaged, and look at that back wheel, Kuto needs to nurse that car back, but he's out of the race, it looks like. So, Marchi Lee is also retired. So, Alex Young has stayed out of trouble. He has led this race from the first turn all the way through to the last lap here. And over the line, Alex Young wins round four of the Audi R8 LMS Cup from Rahul Fry. KOU finally takes a podium position after his fourth place in South Korea. Alex, congratulations on the winning. And how comfortable was it that for you out there today? I don't, it wasn't comfortable. Um, 
Thank God I got um, Andre in first lap so he could hold up the rest for me. Rahal, talk us about uh, the difference between when you have the weight in your car and the when you don't. Yeah, you can. I mean, it's not a big. Uh, it hasn't a big influence uh, on balance side of the car, but you can feel it for sure um, uphill, especially in the last sector. So there, with the weight on, you have to be careful. You have to take care about uh, about the rear tires. So uh, I managed both uh, today. I got fourth in the first race, second in the in the second race. Uh, collected important points. So this is really really uh, important for the championship. So I'm, I can be happy with, uh, with this weekend and say thank you to my mechanic Eddie. So here's how round four finished. Alex Jean wins from Rahul Fry. KOU finally takes his podium position. Frankie Chen was fourth. Matt Solomon was fifth. The latter half of the field, David Chen was 11th. Daniel Bielski, Ashraf Deval were also in the placings. And March Lee, Kato Gachi and Renway Ricky did not finish the final event here at the Fuji International Speedway. So here's how Fuji finishes. Alex Young goes to Malaysia with a five-point lead over Rahul Fry. Third is Frankie Chen with Adli Fung and Mark Chilli in the top five. Darrell Young is in 11th place with 10 points, followed by Alex Awu, Stefan Montesi, Aidan Wrights on six with Ronald Wu, Steve Lin, David Cheng and Ashraf Deval also getting the points. Two action-packed races with six different faces on the podium. And Alex Yun regaining the series lead from Raha Fry. And it's been such a fantastic weekend in Japan. Next up, we are all heading to Malaysia. And we will see you there. Goodbye. <laughs>